Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As promised, I am doing part two of my two-part series today. Uh, I released part one last week and it was all the things that I love about living in China. Um, this week, my video is gonna be all the things that I don't really love about living in China. I'm not gonna use the word hate because I don't really hate anything about living in China. Oh, there's one thing I hate actually, one thing. But the rest of the things are just kind of like mild inconveniences, cultural differences that I'm not used to, things like that. So anyway, let's get started. I have to get these videos done wherever and however I can, so you might hear you in the background. While I'm recording this, I apologize in advance. The first thing that comes to mind when I think of things that bug me about China is the spitting and burping and what is known as the Beijing bikini. I'm gonna lump all of those into one annoyance that I have. Um, so let's start with the spitting. If you <laughs> live in China, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's not just like a casual spit on the side of the road. Like men here will like wind up their spit. Like <laughs> I'm not going to do it because the internet is forever. And if I make this noise, it'll like forever be on the internet. Um, but it's like very guttural, like, uh, like they wind up before they spit and it's like the most nauseating noise. And you hear it constantly walking down the street every 30 feet some guy makes this deep nasty guttural noise and spits and it's so gross and they burp here just like i'll be standing next to somebody on the subway and they'll like let the biggest burp rip and it's just like what the hell are you doing like so gross that's obviously like a cultural thing and it's usually older people older men um i don't usually see a lot of older women do it and i don't see younger people here do it but it's so gross and it is so unsanitary, especially with COVID. I'm like walking around during lockdown and there are dudes just like hawking loogies everywhere on the road. I'm like, you know how unsanitary that is? Um, it's so gross. And they won't just like spit on the side of the road either. Like I have been walking in my complex before and heard from above me, like 10 floors above me, a wind up, that deep guttural wind up. And I like freeze and look up and somebody's on their balcony getting ready to spit. Like, hello, like there are people down here. Why are you spitting off your balcony? Ugh, the spitting is so gross. I hate it and the burping, it's just too much. And um, I know I mentioned the Beijing bikini too and that is something that's more funny um, than something that bothers me, but <laughs> it kind of goes like with the same spitting, burping, just like a cultural norm difference um, is Chinese men when it's really hot out will lift their shirt up um, and expose just their stomach and walk around like that and I have been on the subway before like sitting and there has been like a man standing close to me with like his stomach exposed like inches from my face like sweaty ass stomach because there's no air conditioning and I'm just like put your shirt down dude um, a lot of people, even Chinese people I know, like I have a lot of young Chinese girlfriends and they're like, dude, the Beijing bikini is too much. Like we hate it too. Um, that's again, usually just men and it's older men that, that do it. Oh, so yeah, those are definitely some of the things that like make my skin crawl is just like public behavior like that. The spitting and burping and like, ugh, no, gross. Okay. So Second thing that kind of grosses me out or that I don't really like about uh, about Chinese culture, um, and I've spoken to Hong Kongers and I've spoken to somebody that lives in Taiwan and they don't really do it there. So it seems to be more of a mainland China thing. Um, and before I say what it is, I'm gonna preface by saying I actually benefited from this behavior. Uh, I didn't take advantage of the full behavior because taking advantage of the full behavior is really gross i mean you could argue even what i did was gross but when in china like when in rome um but they potty train their children here by wearing split pants so the kids will just walk down the street and poop and pee as they're walking um they don't really use pull-ups here and that's how they potty train 
They also allow their kids to poop and pee just like anywhere. Um, and that's like a way they potty train because there isn't always a toilet available. And I mean, I know, I remember when my nephew was being potty trained, it's kind of a pain in the butt. If you end up with a lot of accidents sometimes when your kid is being potty trained because they need to go to the potty and uh, you can't find a bathroom fast enough. Well, here it's totally fine if you're just like out and let your kid just pee on the floor. I've seen little kids like poop on the floor at the mall before. Um, not common, like the pooping part. I've seen it at the mall twice where a kid just like poops on the floor and the parent like cleans it up like you would your dog if your dog had an accident somewhere. Um, but like that's just normal here. And when you're out, walking you have to be really careful because I daily I will see a little kid like pee on the pavement or poop on the pavement um and so you're not only having to worry about like dog poop you're worrying about like human poop too like on the roads and I've seen it every day I see it um so the streets are not very sanitary because of that but I I did potty train you and that way a little bit not the pooping but um when we moved here in october he wasn't potty trained and by december he was fully potty trained um even at night like he doesn't wear pull-ups at night anymore or anything and and he had just turned three when when we were finally like fully potty trained even at night and i attribute that to living in china where it was a little easier to allow him to just like pee in the bushes i never let him pee on the on the sidewalk or poop in public that's just too much um but it's totally normal. There's plenty of times walking down the street, he'd say, oh, I have to go pee pee. And I would just look for the nearest bush, walk him over. He'd pull his pants down and pee. People would be walking by. Nobody cares. Nobody looks. Um, I feel like if little kids were constantly like peeing in bushes in America, people would be like, what are you, what are you doing? Take your kid to a bathroom. Um, but here, even, even now that he is potty trained, it doesn't happen as much. But once in a while, he'll say, oh, I have to go pee pee. And we'll be walking because you do a lot of walking here. Um, you know, you're not really driving anywhere usually, so it's even harder to find a bathroom if you're just like out in the neighborhood walking somewhere. And if he says he has to pee, I just find the nearest bush and let him pee um, and it avoids accidents. But um, I think letting him like pee whenever and wherever when we moved here helped him to be potty trained faster. But the pooping in the street part is way too much and not taking your kid to a bush, like that's where I draw the line. And I've seen little kids like pee on the playground like just like walk two feet away from the slide and just like pee on the floor and their parents are just like whatever that's gross like at least take your kid to a bush people um the third thing that i irks me a little bit about china is how cashless it is we use wechat for everything it's an app you you message people on it you um pay with it you you know track your steps with it you can do everything like it's basically like a mixture between facebook and twitter and instagram and your banking app like everything you can call through it uh wechat is like king here in in china um which puts a lot of pressure to keep your phone charged um places here constantly sell or not sell but rent battery banks I've had to use them before. You scan a QR code and it pops out and you can charge your phone and you put it back when you're done. Um, they're everywhere here because if your phone dies, you're screwed. Um, or if you lose your phone, you're screwed. And I hate that pressure because it has happened to me a few times where I've um, lost my phone and been stranded because I don't have any money and places won't take cash. Um, like corner stores will take cash and things like that, but... Um, like if you go to the mall and you go to Hagen Dazs, they are probably not gonna take cash. I actually, the Hagen Dazs by my house does not take cash. Um, the Luckin, which is where I get my iced coffee every morning, you have to pay with the app. They don't take cash. So if your phone is dead or you don't have money on your app, um, cause you have to like go to the bank obviously to put money in the bank. And if you just have cash on you, you're like up shit creek without a paddle. Like you're you're stranded um which really sucks to like have that pressure to constantly make sure that like your phone is charged i hate that um and you have to have a bank account in china to use wechat pay i know from speaking to expats that were in china um back like in 2013 2014 you didn't used to have to have a chinese bank account to use wechat pay but now you do and it was hard because when i first moved to china i think i went like two months without 
a bank account. So Justin couldn't transfer me money on WeChat um, because I didn't have a bank account and places didn't take cash. So it was like really stressful. Um, and my <laughs> most traumatic story of being a new expat in China sort of involves the cashless issue or people not accepting cash. Um, so I left my phone in a Didi. Ewan and I Didi to Walmart and I got out and left my phone in the DD and the, dri the driver drove away before I realized it. So he basically drove away with all my money. I had cash on me, but I didn't have my phone and I need my translator. I needed, um, you know, obviously WeChat pay. I couldn't message anybody and I just like froze. And I, you know, I'm in Chongqing, no one speaks English here. And I stood in front of Walmart for three hours with Ewan waiting until somebody that spoke English came by um, because I didn't have my address in Chinese characters like I could have hit a, a cab will take cash um, not a DD but a taxi driver they kind of give you attitude about it um, but they'll take it and they usually won't give you change either like in my experience anytime I've paid cash in a cab if it's 42 quai and I have a 50 on me they're not going to give me cash they'll always pretend like they don't have ca um, change even if they have change so, um, even if I'd hailed a cab with my cash, like, I think I only had hundreds on me at the time and I didn't have my address in Chinese characters. So I wouldn't have been able to like tell the cab driver where to go. I know how to say my like apartment complex, but Chongqing in Chinese, but Chongqing is humongous. So just knowing my apartment complex name isn't really going to help the, the cab driver. But anyway, um, yeah, we stood outside Walmart for three hours because I lost my phone and I didn't know where the subway was and it was awful. And I was like crying, it was raining. It was the most dramatic thing that has ever happened to me in my whole life. Um, but uh, yeah, it was rough. And actually finally after three hours, three hours of standing in front of Walmart, a guy walked by and it's kind of funny because when you don't ever hear English, when you actually do hear it, it's almost like you don't register it. And he walked by me and passed me a ways on the phone talking in English. And he got past me probably like 25 yards before I registered that, oh my God, that guy was speaking English because you're used to like kind of drowning people out because you don't understand what they're saying. And I like sprinted after him and I was like, oh my God, like you're the first person in three hours that I found that spoke English. And uh, he had his Chinese, he, he had his Chinese girlfriend with him and they were very sweet and they helped me get home. But it was awful. It was the worst day of my life, honestly. Um, totally awful. And it's because I didn't have my phone. Um, and I didn't have WeChat pay to get on the subway or to do anything. Like, I was just stuck. Um, so I definitely hate how reliant on WeChat and how reliant on my phone I have to be here. Um, because it's like a gamble when you leave your house you're like crap is my phone gonna die and I have a power bank that I try to keep charged up but there have been plenty of times where I go out and I think my power bank is charged up and then my phone dies and I go to use my power bank and it's dead and I'm like oh my god so then I have no phone and I have to just go literally I go right home because there's nothing else I can do if my phone is dead in public because if it's dead you can't even scan a QR code to rent one of the power banks that they rent out like in public so I definitely hate that in America I was not as reliant on my phone okay so the fourth issue that i have is again cultural but um because we are foreigners we get stared at constantly every time i leave my house i get stared at i have comments made at me um i get called a foreigner i get asked where i'm from what i'm doing here um people are very nosy when it comes to you being a foreigner Ewan gets his picture taken, he gets touched, he gets his face caressed, his hair ruffled. Um, I even had a lady, my friend Heather was with me at the time, thankfully, but we were at a mall and this lady, she, my friend Heather was holding my um, stroller and I was holding Ewan's hand and this lady, older lady, like came up from behind us and tried to like snatch Ewan from me. 
I mean, she wasn't like trying to kidnap him, I don't think, but she was trying to like pull him away from us to like, I think, get a picture of him or like show her family him. And it was really stressful. Um, and thankfully my friend Heather was there because I kind of froze a little bit and I was like, what the hell is happening? And she like reached over and was like grabbing you and Heather was and like pulling him back to us and was like, what the hell lady? And Ewan was crying cause he was so freaked out. And I remember my friend being like, you want a picture with a crying kid lady? Like, what are you doing? And people are, are like that here. Like they don't care if your kid's freaked out. They don't care if he's crying. Like if he's a white kid with blonde hair, they're getting that damn picture of him. Um, it's really stressful. And I remember the first day I was in Chongqing, um, Yuan and I flew in on like a Sunday night. So the next morning we went to bed that night and we woke up Monday morning and Justin had already gone to work. And it was my first day in Chongqing and I had not been outside the apartment yet. And I was like, oh man, I need coffee. And Justin was like, there's a Lawson's like a block from our apartment. Lawson's is like a 7-Eleven. He's like, they probably have like the Starbucks double shot drinks there. And I was like, okay. So I get Ewan and I dressed and we walked one city block, it was not far, to Lawson's and back. And I was like shaking by the time I got back. We were gone 20 minutes, but I was so physically ill and like shaking. And I had such bad anxiety because the entire walk, people were gawking at us, stopping on the street and just like staring at us walk by. I had a lady take a picture of us and I was not used to that. It was, I was freaked out and I got home and I messaged Justin. I was like, I don't even feel like I, I can leave my house. Like this sucks. Like I don't want to be like a freaking looked at like a circus monkey. Like this is crazy. And I remember for a few months, it really gave me anxiety how much you get stared out at here um, and having your picture taken and being touched and, and had co having comments made at you. Um, the longer I'm here, the less I notice it. And I've also become more brazen because at first I did feel like an outsider and I did feel like I didn't belong. So I was like, oh my gosh, they should be looking at me. But now a lot of times I'll like stare back at people or I'll ask them in Chinese what they're looking at. <laughs> um, and that will get them to look away. Um, and also before I was more meek and if so somebody was like, oh, can I get a picture? I would just let them and now I'll say no. So um, it's gotten easier. It hasn't gone away. I still get stared at. I still have my picture taken. Ewan still gets touched, grabbed, whatever. But I, it's gotten easier to deal with and I don't notice it as much. Um, but it is very stressful. I have been sexually harassed here based on my chest size more than I ever was in America because Chinese dudes, I guess, never see girls with bigger boobs. Like all the chicks in China are flat chested. So like, I also get stared at a lot because of that, which is obviously very uh, uncomfortable and awkward. Um, but yeah, it's, I just hate it, that Eminem lyric. Y'all act like you never seen a white person before. Like goes through my head all the time. Like they literally act like they've never seen a white person before. It's, I think that that's one thing though, that moving here has like taught me to appreciate about America. Um, or that I really love about America is as an American, when I walk down the street in America, I will see people from India, from Africa, from China, from who knows where, Pacific Islands. And in my brain, I never think that they're foreign. I just assume everyone's from America, even if they speak with an accent, because in America, you can move there and become a citizen and you're American. That's the whole point of America, it's all immigrants. Like I would have to wait for somebody to tell me that they weren't American before I would assume that they weren't American. You're Spanish with an accent, okay, you're probably American. You're from India with an accent, but you speak English, okay, you're probably from America. You're, you know, French, but you don't speak English, you're probably still American. Like, I don't know, maybe you don't, speak English but you're still American like I never assume someone isn't from America because everyone is an immigrant in America um which is nice for blending in because here you stick out like a sore thumb if you are not Chinese um and you can't obviously become a citizen so usually and not but not usually but always always the foreigner is foreign they're never going to be a citizen they're never going to be Chinese um so yeah, like I definitely have a new appreciation for America in that aspect. Um, so yeah, 
and it just it, it boggled my mind before but it especially boggles my mind now people that in America are like anti-immigration because that's literally the whole point of America but anyway um I digress so yeah and then the fifth and final thing I'm gonna mention is the thing that I hate it's not a mild inconvenience. It's not something that just irks me a little bit. It is something that I loathe and bothers me and affects me negatively on a daily basis. And that is the Great Firewall. In China, the Chinese Communist Party has blocked information um, and blocked the internet. Google is banned, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Chinese citizens are not allowed to access information. They have no freedom of information here. So in China, you have to download a VPN if you want access to outside information that is not controlled directly by the Chinese Communist Party. And VPNs don't always work. They cost money. And they are a pain in the butt to get onto Chinese devices. Like I have a Chinese iPhone and it was a pain in the butt getting my VPN on it. Um, and they don't always work. And especially during holidays, like national week and during Chinese Lunar New Year, my VPN would just not work for like three days. So I cannot access anything. Netflix, Disney Plus, Facebook, Instagram, Hulu, Twitter, nothing. I can't access anything if my VPN isn't working. Um, and it sucks. It's awful. It's horrible. It's horrible for many reasons. Um, it's horrible for the Chinese people. It's horrible for foreigners. Like everybody gets shafted. Nobody wins except the Chinese Communist Party. Like I do not understand. I don't understand it. And I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure North Korea and China are the only countries that do not allow their citizens free access to the internet. Like it's just, it's horrible. Um, yeah, and it just, it makes basically doing anything here frustrating. Like, it's a it's a crapshoot if Disney Plus is going to work. You want to be like, oh, I want to watch Mickey. Half the time it doesn't even work because it'll, oh, you're on a proxy. You're using a VPN. Like, we're not going to work today. Um, same thing with Netflix. Sometimes it just won't work because it suspects I'm using a proxy. Um, we had to buy, I'll show you the router we bought. Thing's a beast. It was like... 2000 quai it was it was kind of expensive but i have a google chromebook and we had to buy a special vpn router for me to use my google chromebook in china because the internet's blocked and you couldn't get a vpn onto the chromebook um it was like a whole catch-22 like i could only use it if i'm on a vpn router so we had justin had, he spent like a week like i don't know what the term is some geeky weird tech term where he had to like de like break down the router internally and then like rebuild it so it was a vpn router and it was i'll show you it in a second it's a beast it's a huge router um so there's just a lot of stupid crap like that that you're constantly having to like adjust your technology and worry about if it's going to work or not all because the communists communist party do don't want citizens accessing the internet i hate it it sucks it's, it's awful that's definitely the biggest thing. Like, I say that to Justin all the time. I'm like, if it was not for the stupid VPN bullshit, like, I would stay in China a lot longer than I planned to. I hate having to rely on a VPN to function every day. It's, it's awful. This is the router. It is, like, humongous. I don't know. I think those are all supposed to be up like that. I don't really know. But like this is my Chromebook. Um, this router, you can kind of see compared to it. It's huge. Um, it's a humongous router, actually. This will probably be better for size. That's an Xbox controller. Like our other router that we have, this is our regular Chinese router, is like a third the size of this thing. This thing is humongous. But it gets the job done. It makes it so I can actually use my Chromebook. And then we're not actually having to use... A VPN app at home I can just connect to the VPN internet which is good it was expensive and it was a pain in the butt but it is what it is it's China thank you guys for watching and listening to me complain I guess now I just sit and wait for the uh, hateful comments to come rolling in on my YouTube channel but I mean I said in my other video I, I love China I really do it's a beautiful country and there are aspects of every country 
in the entire world that is going to have negatives and positives. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching and uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to stay up to date on what we're doing in China.